Good morning. Today we are meditating together on Psalm 133. And I trust you've read this psalm and seen the beauty of the unity that is described. The feeling of unity is a wonderful one. We all deeply long for it. Anyone who has experienced it longs to experience it again. The metaphor of unity in the psalm is of dew falling both on Mount Hermon in southeast Syria and on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, joining people from the north with people in the south. Another metaphor in the psalm is of oil, a sign of fragrant blessing falling not only on the head but the beard and the collar of the robe and of filling the room with its fragrance. What is the context of this Psalm 133? It may have been written to celebrate the coming together of the tribe of Judah, where David had already reigned for several years, and the tribes to the north that had been loyal to Saul's son Ishbosheth. When David was anointed king over both Israel and Judah, all warring ceased. On the other hand, it might have been sung as people set off on pilgrimage from the north of Israel to Jerusalem. This is, after all, a psalm of ascent. There is something about setting off on pilgrimage that creates unity. There are films made of the unity disparate people experience as they leave from various parts of France on foot to walk to St. James of Compostela in northwestern Spain. <clears throat> Things slow down. People forget their urgent business concerns and tasks. We long for this unity, <clears throat> unencumbered by ordinary cares. There is so much disunity in man, in humankind. In the Bible, one of the first signs of the fall is the jealousy of Cain against his brother Abel. Chapters later, in another picture of fraternal disunity, Esau forms a plan to kill his only brother Jacob, causing Jacob to flee to his uncle Laban's home a few hundred miles away. Jacob and Esau's reconciliation twenty years later is as surprising as it is tender. After all, you would think that Jacob's own family would be a picture of love after this. But Jacob's sons are a picture of jealousy and hatred. His ten sons in a jealous rage sell their brother Joseph into slavery. These ten sons' reconciliation with Joseph many years later is one of the most poignant scenes in Scripture. We long for such reconciliation. Peter's meeting with Jesus, disconsolate as he is about his betrayal, is luminous with joy. It is almost as though these scriptural portraits of disunity and reconciliation are pointing to a day when reconciliation will occur and the world will once more dwell in unity. Much in literature longs for it too. The most enduring thing about the Lord of the Rings is not the conquering of Mordor by the armies of dwarves, eagles, men and elves, but the friendship between Frodo and Samwise, and between Pippin and Mary. When Samwise says that he can't carry the ring, but he can carry Frodo, it is the highlight of the book. How does that picture find fulfillment for us today? Christ is the agent of our reconciliation, not only amongst ourselves, but in the entire world. He is Sam Gamji carrying us. He is Joseph forgiving and saving his brothers. He is King David reconciling the tr divided tribes to himself. But let us return to the image of oil falling down over the head. Anointing oil is the Old Test in the Old Testament was used to anoint kings, priests, and prophets. It was a symbol of God's Holy Spirit. When the oil of anointing was poured on the head of individuals, they were equipped for battle, became kings or priests, and begin 
to speak out in God's name. A new power clothed them. This same Holy Spirit is what knit the community of believers together on Pentecost and the book of Acts so that the unity the Jewish regulations and Old Testament laws endeavored vainly to impose, God's Holy Spirit brought about by coming to live within believers. This Holy Spirit, God's life within us, is God's supreme gift to us. He is the oil of unity. That's why it is so often in prayer that we feel this unity amongst us as believers today, even among people with different political understandings, racial backgrounds, financial and educational differences, and language. As we pray and look to Christ in faith, the Holy Spirit knits us together, that all of them, all of, that all of them may be one, Father, Jesus prayed, just as you are in me, and I am in you. This he prayed just before his arrest. This unity is the goal of Christ's work. One day it will be ours forever in him. Until then, may God's Holy Spirit unite us as we pray. May his Holy Spirit be poured out over our heads and spill down to our hearts and into our words. And as we set off on pilgrimage together toward the holy city of Jerusalem, may his spirit equip, anoint, and unify us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that indeed you have given us your Holy Spirit. Thanks to the work of your cross. And as we look to you, our head, Lord Jesus Christ, may you with your Holy Spirit unite us and fill us and equip us for the pilgrimage ahead. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, and may God bless and fill your day with his love.